It's about that time, isn't it, folks? What's up, everybody? Dre right back at it again with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about Red or Not because they just released another newsletter. This one is called Soundtrack Design and Composer Q&A. They had a Q&A? Since when? Must have missed it. Well, anyways, this newsletter is brought to us again by the very generous Guinevere, the community manager at Void Interactive. So let's go ahead and get started here. The introduction starts with, hey, everybody. It's time for the 17th bi-weekly briefing for Ready or Not. The first of a three-part series? Interesting. Stretching over the next several weeks, covering the game's audio design. This time around, we'll be covering elements of Ready or Not's music and have the game's composer, Zach Bauer, speak to his vision for the soundtrack. What happened to the last guy? Dan Liston? Is he still on the team? He was that guy that made the original soundtracks with all the freaking uh, trailers. I'll have a link down to his SoundCloud so you could actually hear all the music that he made for Ready or Not. There's actually an interesting story behind the musicians that worked at Ready or Not. Like, I remember, like, one of the very first ones actually leaked a soundtrack and ended up getting fired, but I'm getting off topic here. Soundtrack design. A game's soundtrack is vital to its identity. The tension it builds, the action it intensifies, the moments it brings to new heights. Each song has to be crafted not only to stand on its own, but to complement the game's setting, tone, and experience. With this goal in mind, Red or Not soundtrack is being made to be as vertical as possible, allowing us to add or remove layers during the key moments of gameplay. For example, the drums on a combat track may kick in when the player engages a suspect, and as the firefight goes on for more time, or if more suspects are involved, the track will have more layers of music added in. By contrast, non-combat tracks are made to be unintrusive so as not to distract from the player's ability to gather information from other audio cues. You'll still be able to hear distant footsteps and voices through walls, but you'll have that underlying tension accompanying your actions. And then it has a video here of one of the first soundtracks that we're going to listen to in just a second, but let's read what it says underneath here. It says that the name of this track is called Broken Clock. Interesting. Let's take a listen here. You ought to really know how to feel about that. I mean, it's not bad, but I think that it would be a really good background song. Like if I'm like moving through a corridor and it's like dark and I'm trying to look out for suspects or people. But I don't know, to me, it just doesn't feel like it hits right, you know? But maybe if I listen to the track or if I'm in the motion, maybe I'll think otherwise. Well, no, continuing on. It shows off another video here of another soundtrack. Underneath it, it says, No More Lights, which I believe is the name of this track. If I remember correctly, I think I actually heard a full version of the song in the NDA server. But let's listen to this and you guys tell me what you think think. Let's go. Yeah, so I think I like this track a lot better than the previous one. I'm not saying that this is like the best track that I've ever heard, but I mean, comparing this to Dan Liston's version of Ready or Not's soundtrack, I just feel like Dan really got the atmosphere, you know, right, right? But I mean, I don't want to compare it just yet because Dan only made like three tracks and this guy's only dropped about two that we could actually hear. It's not even the full track. And I mean, Dan's were more of a atmospheric kind of track and this one's more of like a, you're walking down like a darkened hallway type of track. So they're very different from each other's. So, yeah, let's push on here. It says here, both of the above tracks are small slices of Red or Not Soundscape. Yeah, if I remember correctly, they said that they were going to be around two to three minutes, like each, I think. Here to talk more about it with the composer Q&A, Zach Bauer, the new composer for Ready or Not. I know we haven't really talked too much about him, but he kind of just showed up one day. We didn't really think too much about it, but uh, yeah. So let's see what it says. Here to talk more about Ready or Not Soundtrack is our composer, Zach Bauer, who recently joined our team and has proven himself to be incredibly hardworking. I'm not really sure who asked these questions here, but I am too 
assume that at some point there was a Q&A and I just missed it. So here is the first question. How did you end up joining Void Interactive? And he responds with saying, believe it or not, two ingredients of luck, a lot of luck, and a ton of persistence. In the face of that internal voice going, don't upload, this ain't it. I'm Moonlight as a composer when I'm not at the day job. And if I'm not working on a smaller project, I like putting time into remix tracks where I ask myself, how would I write this place? With that in mind, I took a sliver of Red Your Nuts main theme composed by an extremely talented Dan Liston and expanded on it, slowing it down and giving it a more darker coat of paint. After a few days over hovering the upload button and chewing my fingernails off, I finally decided to pull the trigger and post it around. Two weeks later, I see a message from our community manager, the amazing Gwyn, asking if I'm up for a chat with our creative lead. The rest is history. I still lose sleep thinking about how exciting the whole thing is. Moral of the story, push against the block as hard as you can. Oh man, I feel like that's my channel story. I think about it. Fight against the algorithm. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Really cool way to get hired, I would say. I'll link the video that he's talking about down in the description if you want to check it out. It's actually a pretty decent remix. I like it. Continuing on here, they ask the question, what's your overall vision for Ready or Not's soundtrack? And he replies with, I love Splinter Cell Chaos Theory's Plunderphonic style. What the heck does that mean, Plunderphonic? I think Amon Tobin nailed the atmosphere with his crazy cacophony or cacophony? I'm not sure how to say these words. Of sound that perfectly matches the game. Being able to grab some of that style, mix it up with orchestral music, and spread it out a bit more, a la ambient Eric Brosius, I'm not sure if that's how you say those names, to give players as much situational awareness as possible is the number one priority. Gritty, dark, hard hitting when it needs to be. These are some of the goals when working through the music for Ready or Not. Okay, I've never really played Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. The only Splinter Cell that I've ever really played was um, Conviction. I just remember that one song, uh, I think it's called The Green of Salt, Unforgiven, DJ Shadows, that song. That was a really good song. It's like the only one that I remember though. You should check it out. But anyways, the next question that they ask here is, how do you tackle creating music for a game where environmental awareness and audio cues are so important. How does the soundtrack serve to enhance the experience? And Zach replies with, the tactical shooter genre is tricky with music. I mean, he's not wrong. Like, uh, I'd say about half or a majority of people tend to not even like a soundtrack in their tactical games. Like, they would rather hear the footsteps or noises of people just moving around. But luckily, this isn't the type of game where you really need to, like, hear people. Like, it's more probably focusing on your eyes than trying to hear footsteps since it's such close quarters. But anyways, how much do you pull before you don't have any music at all? In this case, we're balancing it out through F mod, using a few parameters to mix things up. Busting a door down, but not in combat. Let's turn the ambient intensity up. Have a few suspects ganging up on you? Let's turn the combat intensity up. Today's tech lets us take full advantage of crafting a really immersive and intense soundscape with a lot of expanded nuance. What's really exciting is that the line between this is combat music and this is ambient music can be blended to a point where there is no line. Is music catered to how you're experiencing the game? That's an interesting way to go about it. Can't wait to experience it. Alright, moving on to the next one here. The next question is what would you say is your greatest musical influence? And he replies with, when it comes to sound tech and sheer experimentation, Amon Tobin is definitely my main go-to. Again, his work on Splinter Cell was so raw, so visceral, that it stuck with me long after release. He really nailed down the atmosphere just based on whatever textures he was exploring. On a more melodic note, Johnny Greenwood steals it. He dabbles in a lot of experimental stuff too, but his orchestral work on Phantom Thread is out of this world. Anyone with a command of emotion like that in the orchestrator's chair gets a gold star from me. It's really too bad that I didn't really experience this type of music back in the day. I feel like I should have played more of these games. But anyways, moving on, here's the last question. What has been the most difficult but most rewarding part of working on Ready or Not soundtrack so far, and he replies with, It's terrifying sitting on a track that's about to go public. You really want to please as many folks as possible while maintaining a personal overall vision that encompasses everything. At the same time, that fear totally washes away working on some new tracks and being pumped to finally show them off. It's a game of balance that keeps the blood pressure in a good spot. It's actually a pretty good response right there. Like, any game is going to receive a hell of a lot of criticism. No matter what you post, no matter what you do, people are going to hate it and people are going to love it. But hopefully, there's more people loving it than hating it, you know? But anyways, in conclusion, this concludes their 17 bi-weekly briefing. The first of three which will focus on elements of the game audio design, and a big thank you from the composer Zach Bauer that was just recently added. I find it interesting that Dan Liston is all of a sudden missing. Like, what the heck happened to him? I hope he left on good terms, because I felt like that was just kind of swept under the rug. But, uh, yeah, overall, it's a pretty good Q&A and a pretty good newsletter so far. Relatively tiny, like always, but nice to see them coming along. Apparently, Zach has actually done stuff before. Uh, he 
he uh, apparently made a track for Receiver 2 and actually received some praise for it from them. If you don't know what Receiver is, it's, it's kind of a weird game to be honest. I tried playing the second one. Holster the Dead Eye Mechanic. Holster for Dead Eye Mechanic. Ah! Why? <laughs> wow, he trolled the shit out of me. Should be, I should be fucking. Let me not do that. Yeah, it's just, it's just really odd, I'll say that. Although, I'm not entirely sure if this was just a remix, like, ready or not, or if he actually made a track for the game. I can't really say for sure, but that's pretty neat. So, uh, yeah. For those of you that keep asking, Beta comes out in June, so hopefully they'll actually make the date and not miss it like last time. But anyways, I think that's where I'm pretty much gonna end the video. If you enjoyed the fact that I cover games like Ready or Not, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month, it really helps. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. Be sure to stick around, because I cover a lot of tactical games. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.